So the first thing that may be my review and what interests you have in common is the idea of good work. So uh, my report wasn't actually called the Taylor Review, it was called Good Work. And the government's response to my report uh, was called Good Work. They've got a lot of other things to do rather than thinking up names of the report, so they just copied mine. Um, uh, and I, I argued in my uh, review that there were five reasons why good work uh, matters. So I said, first of all, it's about a new social contract. So uh, if you're as old as me, you remember the post-war social contract. You remember the idea that if you work hard, if you have a job, you'll get better off every year and you'll be economically secure. Now, that is no longer a promise that we make to people. Uh, it is no longer the case that if you work hard, you will be better off every year and you'll be economically secure. So for me, the very least we need to say to people is if you have a job, you will at least be treated with decency. And so I used the first line in my report was, every job should be fair and decent with scope for development and fulfillment. So first reason, social contract. Second reason, which you've already heard a lot about today and we'll hear a lot more about, is health and well-being. Bad work screws you up. And so bad work isn't just bad for the people who are affected by it, but those people are more likely to be unemployed, they're more likely to be using the health service, so there is an externality created by work which is demeaning or too pressurising or unfair, or which people have absolutely no scope for autonomy or for self-expression. Fear about technology, the robots are coming, we'll all be replaced by algorithms by next Tuesday, that kind of thing. Uh, and actually, we need to talk about technology in terms of how it's going to benefit human beings, how it's going to be better uh, for us. Um, and I want, let me just say why I think that's particularly important. Um, if you go back 10 years, if we'd been in a conference and we'd been talking about globalization, what you might have heard is you might have heard people saying the following things about globalization, particularly financial globalization. They'd have said it's an unstoppable force, so get out of the way. They'd have said there will be losers but they just need to suck it up because most people will gain. Or they would have said, it might mean that things that you care about, like you know, your capacity to pass your own laws or your borders or whatever, those things are going to have to go. They're just old-fashioned. They're out of date. You know, give them up. And fourthly, this financial globalization, it might look very complicated, but don't worry about it because there's really clever people in banks and they know what they're doing. <laughs> Now, you might have noticed that's not gone terribly well as a discourse. <laughs> and that's, you know, there is not just Trump and it's not just Brexit and populism more generally. There is academics now, serious, thoughtful people are saying the story about globalization wasn't as straightforward as, as people said it was. But listen to how people talk about technology and you'll recognize the tune. You know, it's an unstoppable force. Get out of the way. There will be losers, but they just need to suck it up because most people will gain. It will mean that things that you care about, like your privacy, like protecting your children, like being able to raise taxes, but you just need to give that up. And um, you might not understand all this technology, but there's these really lovely people in California, and they wear jeans and they love their children. And you know they're in charge and it's all gonna be, but that's not looking so good anymore either, is it? That, that last one. Um, <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg, that's the kind of, what a reputational roller coaster that is, eh? So, I don't think the future is people not working in organizations. Um, uh, I think the challenge is, how do we become the kinds of uh, organizations that we need to be? Because actually, when I talk to quite a lot of people who've gone off on their own, some of them do it because they want autonomy, they want freedom, they want the tax perks. But actually, a lot of people who've done that say to me, the reason they've done it is because they just got sick to death of corporate life. They got sick to death of a particular culture, particular dysfunctional ways in which organizations work. So organizations are the future, but we are gonna to have to think incredibly hard about how we have to change organizations to be able to meet the demands and expectations of the 21st century. If we can create organizations that are creative communities with a cause, then the future of work and future of society will be great. But it's a challenge and it's something that we have to think very hard about, about how we undertake it, how we achieve it. And I hope that's gonna be something that we'll be talking about a lot for the rest of the day. Thank you.